Welcome to the Cape Wrath Trail, or my section that I am planning to do. Now I've just got off the Corin Ferry. Now you can also get the ferry up at Fort William, which the majority use. Basically people that are travelling to Fort William by bus or train They'll just get the ferry up there, walk down round and then into the glen to the real start. Whereas I'm kind of doing it from the bottom, walking up and then into the glen. The weather's not looking good, hence straight on with the waterproofs. But yeah, let's see what the Cape Wrath Trail is like this time. I'm really looking forward to it and hopefully the weather will clear up later on in the day. That is us now into Kona Glen, or Kona Glen, and the weather has just been a bit wild uh, since I set off. But it's nice to be on the trail. I'm looking forward to getting right along this glen and finding somewhere for the tent. But as I'm walking through, I mean, look at the mountains. Really nice and moody. I actually like it when it's like this. It's really nice apart from being a bit wet. So yes, maybe another six or seven miles today, I hope, and then find somewhere nice for the tent and yeah, get into something a bit drier. But I'm glad the rain is off. Still really windy, but it's been difficult to film at times. It's just been torrential downpours, and I'm hoping this is the start of something a bit better, especially for getting the tent set up later on. But what a place, and the rivers just now are wild, absolutely crazy. Now I do know if it stays like this weather-wise over the next day or two, I do have river crossings, so that could be a bit of a problem. But, yes, let's get battered on again in the end of the glen. I am so glad to have had something to eat and it was an Expedition Foods meal, sweet and sour chicken with rice, I really enjoyed it. But later on I'm going to have a dessert, I have brought some of these Summit to Eat meals and this one is custard apple crunch, there's other ones in there, rice pudding and, yeah, I think there's rice pudding and raspberry, that'll be good. 
I'm looking forward to it. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to try these tent meals. I brought some of these as well. It's not something I normally have breakfast, but I really need to on this trail. And this one's a super seed and red berry. And what I'm actually going to do is cold soak it in my cup or my mug overnight and just have it cold in the morning. I'm going to set my alarm for five o'clock so I can get up, get the tent away and basically on the trail as soon as possible, especially if the weather is light today. I'd rather just try and get as much distance done as I possibly can. So that's the game plan. I need to get out of these damp clothes. I'm a bit on the yeah, a bit on the wet side. So that's it. Get the gym jams on or the pajamas on, and that's it for this one. And we'll be back on the trail tomorrow morning. Just been checking out the Glenfinnan monument on my way past. Now I've left the camp spot I was at and I've headed round to the actual Glenfinnan Visitor Centre. You basically walk round the back of that, you might actually see the Glenfinnan Viaduct in the distance which we're going to walk under in a little while. But I actually just walked the road from where I was at to here because the actual route is meant to go through some woodland, but the bridge there is closed for maintenance. So I've actually just cut across along the road. And the road was actually pretty good. Uh, the verges were good, safe enough for walking on. And yeah, that's it. We're going to head round here now and up towards the viaduct. And I'm hoping the rain's going to go off today. I really am. At last, the rain is off and the wind has died down. It's just been hellish the last day or so and I really can't wait to dry everything out. I am ringing. Now, this bit of glen though, coming from the Glenfinnan Visitor Centre, is really nice. It's a great little bit of a walk and it's a good trail or a good path. Well, matter of fact, it's a bit of a road. And I'm going to head on right through and into the mountains and today I'm not sure how far I'm going to go or where I'm going to camp. I'm just going to see how the legs feel. Just batter on, see how far I can get. But there is little bits of blue sky appearing now and again and the midges are starting to come out. That's the downside with all the rain. I'm expecting them to come out later on and it could be quite wild. That was really nice to be able to stop off and just have a little bit of lunch. It was actually one of my desserts, but I had it just now. And because this is one of the few bothies in Scotland with electricity, it's quite handy to charge your battery bank, your camera, phone, before you head off right into the wilds. And the next section is going to be a bit more... Yeah, a bit more challenging, but the walk in so far through the Glen up from the viaduct, it's been lovely, a really, really nice area.
time for a rest on this nice little seat here. Now, I've just got this black to get over and down the other side, and that's where I'll be looking for somewhere to camp for this evening. There's plenty of water round about here, there's a waterfall just there, so I'll fill up my bottle, and I think, yeah, I'm going to finish off some of these nuts, a little bit of an energy boost, and then we'll get that tackled and done. I'm so glad to be down and into the glen. There was uh, a few, <laughs> a few scary moments there with the, the ground really quite slidey. But yes, now we just need to get along through the glen and find somewhere for the tent later tonight. Probably still got another maybe five or six miles to walk yet. I am so glad to have got the tent set up. And we're in Glen Desiree. I've just passed Akulbothy to the right of the camera. And I found this flat spot. So I'm just drying everything out. It's the first chance I've had actually. Things such as even socks and yeah, underwear drying in the wind there. And my jacket and stuff. Yeah, good to get everything out and aired. And hopefully tomorrow onwards the weather's going to be pretty good. So I've just had my supper. I've had a Expeditions food meal. I had a chicken tikka with rice which was fantastic. And I've had a apple custard dessert as well. I was really needing it. And I'm basically just getting everything ready for tomorrow. I've made up some juice. And my breakfast cold soaking. I'm having a look at the map. And that's it. An early night and set the alarm for five o'clock. We'll get up and onto the trail. Yeah, pretty sharp I think. Uh, it could be another 16, 17 mile day. But we'll see how it goes, see what happens with the weather. Well, that's it for this one. And yeah, time to hit the sack.
an old structure here. I wonder what that was for, all the way up here. But, yes, good to get out of Glendessery. I have left where I was camped this morning, kind of up round the side of some woodland, and then really up to here. This is, I think, more or less the kind of Bielach before you go down the other side, and I'm heading towards Surley's Bothy. I'm sure it's Surley's. I do know that there's a dodgy river crossing where, because we've had so much rain, yeah, this could be interesting, try to get across at the bottom here. But what a place this is, as you just come up here and you've got the mountains kind of surrounding you, it's absolutely beautiful. Very, very rugged and remote. having a rest on the mountainside before I head down and we get to Surly's Bothy you can just see it in the distance there on the right hand side can't wait my legs are aching it's been a bit of a, a knee a knee buster coming down today but not far now and then we're down by the yeah, down by the shore I've just taken the high road track up from the Bothy and you have to do that when the tide is in. Normally, or when the tide is out, you can walk around the kind of peninsula, but when the tide is in like just now, you have to take the high road. But be aware that it is very, very narrow at sections and a very high drop if you were to slip. I was quite surprised actually how narrow it was. But yes, I'm going to get bartered on round and find somewhere to camp for tonight. Now I did look inside the Bothy and there's a lady also doing the Cape Wrath Trail who's staying the night there, so I just left her to it and yes, let's find somewhere for the tent and hopefully it's not too far round. to switch the GoPro cam. Oh dear, check this out. Coming up and over that pass today was brutal. Absolutely chucking it down with rain as well. And it's just, well the shower's just passed. I think it's about seven, maybe eight o'clock at night. And that's us just, well, just me. I don't know what's happened to this girl, I hope she's not far behind. She was kind of tailing me there. Uh, so yeah, that's us off the, the mountain, over the Bielach and down. And then down ahead, Barristol Bay. I am dying, absolutely dying.
I've just left the Bothy. And the Barrisdale Bothy is very good because there's electricity there if you need to charge anything. There's a little sink, you've got water. Yeah, there's even a toilet as such. It's a really nice spot and in front of the Bothy, the grass area, ideal for pitching a tent. And all that they ask is that you give a an honesty donation of five pounds to camp the night. And after our trek yesterday, it was fantastic to have a decent place to pitch the tent and also somewhere to kind of dry off some of our clothes. Absolutely ringing. Now, the girl that came in with me as well followed me yesterday. She's still there having her breakfast. I'm battering on this morning. It's about half past six. I just want to try and get the miles in. It doesn't help with doing the filming either. It's really a long days. And here's praying that the rain stays off. I really couldn't face another day of torrential rain. I am so glad to have got round all that shoreline from Barrasdale. Wow, that's a bit of a, an undertaking. It reminds me a lot of the section at Loch Lomond when you do the West Highland Way, but that's just the same thing but on steroids. And I'm at Kinloch Hearn now over here behind the camera, and I think there's a place where we might be able to get something to eat and drink. And you can actually, where I was sitting, you can actually see this trail. It's steep, very, very steep. making good progress to try and get to Shield Bridge tonight. You basically come right over the top of all these mountains. You follow like a Land Rover track all the way round. And then over to the left, you just might see it, there's like a little stalker's hut. And you cross the river and then up to here. But yes, knackered. I did pass a lot of guys on the mountain bikes or the electric mountain bikes. I could go one of them right now. Yeah, maybe another three or four hours walking, I think. And that should get us to Shield Bridge. But it's starting to clear now, clouds in between the, the mountains. You can actually see the mountains now on the opposite side of the water where I was walking this morning. Basically just on a big loop right round and over. Bloody hell.
Hallelujah. Can't see. Shield bridge. Welcome to the Glen Shield Caravan and Camping site and I am using this day 5 as a kind of a rest day before I hit the trail for another 4 days up to Ullapool and I'm also using it as a point where I've picked up my food parcel which they were kind enough to accept but I'm also looking forward to going to the Kintail House Hotel which is also a couple of miles round the road there. Their restaurant opens at five o'clock and I'm looking forward to getting something more substantial than the, you know, the dehydrated meals I've been having. I really can't wait. And also a couple of sherbets or two. Yeah, that's one of the few things that's been keeping me going as I thought of a decent meal and a couple of pints. Good morning from the Kintail Lodge Hotel and I've just set off from the Glenshield campsite. Now the reason I've come back here is last night I had a fantastic meal and a few drinks. Now service is excellent here but behind me there's also a little shop they've opened called the Bun Shop and the young lady that runs that now does bacon rolls and it's 8 o'clock, so if you're ever staying at the Glen Shield campsite and you're walking towards, well, basically to go and do the Falls of Glomac, you can now stop in here and grab a bacon roll on your way and a, a coffee. Yes, yeah, a great place. Now, another shout-out I need to do for them is that the new campsite, because it's new ownership, didn't have any power facilities, so I could charge up my power bank, and I needed that done so I could film the rest of this trip. So they let me charge it overnight and I picked it up this morning, which was fantastic of them. So yes, pop into the Kintail Lodge. Excellent food, get a few drinks and in the morning a bacon roll. Perfect before you hit the trail again. This is the path for the Falls of Glomac and it's a bit that gets everybody's knickers in a twist including mine, I'm not looking forward to it it's a bit slippy, wet 
Yes, the sooner I'm down and off it safely the better. But again, I actually prefer it to some of the hills either side and the long bypass route that you could do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to GoPro mode, put away the big camera and I'll put the GoPro on and we'll see what it's like and hopefully it all goes well. Luckily I did pass the mountain rescue earlier this morning, they're at their base, if I do need them. Okay, right, let's get this done.
having negotiated the falls of Glomac, I've decided to stop and have a bite to eat before I batter on. I've got a few more miles to get through today. So I'm going to have one of my desserts, a custard and apple crunch. My legs are really feeling it today, especially coming up and over there. Yeah, that must be a good nine miles so far already, and it's about lunchtime. Yeah, really, really hurting. Now, the falls of Glomac and getting yeah, around that path, I'm not great with heights by any means, and I was apprehensive, but I did manage it, and there's a couple of sketchy bits, but again, you just need to take your time and make sure your footing is bang on, especially if you're boots like my Salomon's where you're concerned you might slip. I just really took my time. And I did hope to record it on my GoPro. If it worked, you'll have seen it. If not, that's peeved me a bit. But yeah, again, I can't tell you if you could manage it or not. It just depends on your level, your level for exposure, heights, and things like that. I will say I was apprehensive, but yeah, I managed it, no problem, so I'm glad. But yeah, down now, and what I'm planning to do is head round to is at the Iron Lodge, I think, something like that, probably camp there tonight. So I'm going to have this refuel, and then get battered on. Just set up in the loft of Mealbury Bothy and it's been a rather long day. I think it was about 17 miles and near the end there it was just constant drizzle and a lot of bog trotting as well to get here. Now I'm hoping tomorrow that I can maybe set off early and we can hit Kinloch. Kinloch you Possibly, yeah, can look you campsite. We'll see. That's going to be a very long day, and it depends really what it's like when we leave this bothy and head on round. But what a day! Uh, the Falls of Glomac, that was interesting. But just after that, yeah, it's just quite remote to wilderness all the way across. Just try to get everything kind of dried off now. A shame there's no actual firewood in the bothy because it would have been really nice to have had a fire and dried everything off but yeah there's nothing but at least it saves yeah, camping another night in a wet tent and that's it I'm going to hit the sack and early doors again and just get battered on what an adventure so far it's been a challenge at times uh, it really has but to make an excellent progress and actually getting a lot further than I thought I would in the time period. So that's it for now and I'll speak to you again later.
auch. It is one o'clock and yes, we're heading to a place called Craig and I'd hoped to get there, well, I wish I'd got there a little bit earlier, but coming up and over today from the Bothy, wow, that was incredible. I mean, so far, that's six hours, 50 minutes I've been on the go and 12.3 miles. I don't know if I'm going to be able to achieve it, but if I can get to Craig and then up north towards the Coolin Lodge, I'm in with a shout of actually getting to Kinloch U. <sighs> might be late, but it might be it might be doable. Hence why I'm actually having something to eat at the moment. I didn't have a breakfast. So I'm starving. So I'm going to have some scrambled egg with cheese and caramelised onion for lunch. A coffee. I've got lots of sweeties there. And I've made up some dilute juice as well. So I'll have this. Kind of get refuelled. And then we'll see if I can make it to Kinloch U or not. I am dying, absolutely dying. I've come along the road from the left of the camera and then you cut up through this forest and this takes you over the pass and towards Kinloch U, I think. I'm just shattered, Abs I don't know what the altitude is I've done today alone, but I'm at the 18 mile mark. The midges, yeah, just killing me. I just want to get the tent up and crash out. Right, need to move on. Too much. What a beautiful morning. The clouds are lovely. And last night I was lucky enough to get the last pitch at the Kinloch U campsite. Very lucky indeed. And yesterday was just a really, really long walk. I pushed myself almost to the limit with that. And I covered 26 miles. But today, we're going to follow this track right round and it takes us towards the Fisherfield area or the Fisherfield Munros which I've done in the past. And once you get to the Fisherfield Munros you've got Cheneval Bothy and then you can cut up and over and then that takes you onto the road to Ullapool and Ullapool is the target for today but it will be another epic walk. If the weather's like this today yeah, what a great way to more or less end the trip.
time for a rest, a drink and something to eat. Coming over the back there, or up and over, that was hard. That fisher field section there was quite hard. I thought it would have been a bit easier than it was. My legs are killing me. Now it's a case of continuing along this thin trail and we should be close. In about another hour or two we'll be at Cheneval or near Cheneval Bothy. If you want to go to Cheneval Bothy, you will take the track to the left. Basically it runs below Anchelic there, the Munro. Stunning mountain. One I've still to do actually. But if you want to get out of here quicker or quicker to Ullapool, you take the track to the right and you'll see it winding up on the hillside there. And I might, yeah, I'm sure my American friend I have met on the trail is up there at some point ahead of me. But yes, I'm glad to have got to here. Coming all the way through the fisher field, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a leg buster. Much like the rest of the trail, to be honest. It's just, it's just small steps you're taking all the time. You can't really get a good stride at, in sections. But at least now there's a good bit of track, although it's uphill. Get up there and then down the other side and it's just one step closer to Ullapool. That is my Cape Wrath trip over with. I've done the section I wanted to do. What a, what a trip it has been. And it's had its ups and its downs. And last night as I come off the Munro's from Anchelic through the Fisher Field, once I got to the road, it was about 7 o'clock at night and I did get a taxi from there through to Ullapool mainly because I had accommodation booked and I wanted to get something to eat before the shops all closed. It was another long day, that was about 24 miles, even before I got the taxi. So quite an undertaking, the last, the last few days have been very long ones. Now, they call it the Cape Wrath Trail, it's not really a trail. And to me, I would class it as a challenge, the Cape Wrath Challenge, because it does test you both physically and mentally. It tests your gear, your navigation knowledge. I think it's more a, a personal goal thing to do it, to test yourself to the limit. But you really do need to have a bit of knowledge, experience at the long distance walking. Yeah, certainly experience of being out in the hills on your own, in the wilds. But again, you'll know if you want to do it or not, and it's entirely up to yourself. I'm glad I've done it, and it's kind of more or less ticked off. So that's it. The bus is coming in a second. I'm heading home. And yeah, what a, what a trip.